Welcome back to DIY with Diamond Tack Co. Today we'll be going over how to do a cobra braid, which is going to come in handy for a couple other projects we're going to be doing in the future. A cobra braid is a four strand braid where we have two strands as the core and the other two strands are basically wrapping around the outside of the core. It's a really great braid for long-term use. It's very resilient. One thing I do want to note, and you'll see this when we switch over to the mule tape section, is that because mule tape is such a slicker rope, you do have to work a little bit harder to keep it as snug while braiding. So we'll start by taking our left strand over the top of our two core strands, leaving a bit of a gap on that left side. We'll then take our right strand over the top of our left strand, under our core strands, and up through that gap we made on the left. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull our slack out, and we wanna make sure all of it is pulled out. We want this to be as close to our starting point as physically possible. The tighter you can get this braid, the better. The longer it's going to hold up and the cleaner it's going to end up looking. Now we're going to jump over to our right strand and it's going to go over our core and under the left strand. After that, we'll just jump back over to the left strand, make sure it's over our right strand, take it under our cores and up through the gap we made on our right side. We'll pull that slack out nice and tight again, and then we just repeat these two steps for the entire length of the braid. So our left will go over the cores, our right will go over the left, under the cores, and up through that gap. And then we just flip it back and forth. Pretty simple, easy peasy. You'll also see here in just a second that I push the section we just did up into the other sections and then continue to pull the slack out. This is just to make sure that we don't have any gaps there, we're not leaving big spaces, we're keeping everything nice and snug and consistent. So here's the difference between pulling up all those sections and pulling out all your slack to like just pulling out your slack only and not pushing the sections into each other. You'll be able to see the core in the center and maybe that's the look you're going for. There's truly no written rules about braiding, so if you want to add a different colored core rope and then leave those sections spaced out a little bit so you can kind of get it like a peekaboo effect, more power to you. Another cool thing about this braid is you can do what I call a ghost start. <laughs> I don't know what the technical term is, I've never seen anyone else talk about it, but basically instead of starting attached to something, you're just starting at the very base of the core strands. An application you could use this in is like if you're making a set of kids reins and you wanted adjustable knots for like say a lesson program, you have a bunch of different kids, they have different skill sets and whatnot, you can use this and so it's movable and the tighter you braid it the harder it will be to move so it should stay in place fairly well. Now moving on to the mule tape, I am still using a paracord core but you can definitely use a mule tape core, there's no issues with that. But I do want you to notice that the mule tape even in the smallest size is still almost twice as big as paracord. So if you look at a mule tape knot next to a paracord knot, it is going to be a lot thicker than the paracord. And I do just want to mention again that mule tape is a lot slicker than paracord, so you are going to have to fight it a little bit to keep it tight. But it is doable. Now this is a braid that needs to be cut and burnt usually. I haven't found a successful way to keep it snug and tight without actually burning it, but it is super simple to do. You just cut the tails, burn it real close and smash it down, and that is the same for both paracord and mule tape. And just remember for both paracord and mule tape, when you are burning it, you just want it to bubble a little bit before you press it down. You don't want to catch it on fire if possible. Another awesome thing about this braid is that you can do an infinity loop with it, so that is great for like tie downs. It tends to distribute pressure pretty evenly and in a very wide space, so it just works great for a lot of applications. So we are going to use this for a couple applications in the future videos, and I just want you to know that practice makes perfect and I believe in you. You can do this! <laughs> As always, thank you guys for watching, I hope you guys have a great day!